Well, this might be the most important lesson I've recorded of all the 80 plus lessons in this series. It's really learning suggestions for this material, but it's really can apply to a lot of subjects. I'm going to subtitle this how to study, how to study this material. And for a lot of students, it'll be a brand new way of thinking about taking notes, especially when you have multiple sources of information. And so I'm going to try to convince you that pay really extra attention to this whole lesson. I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to be, but if this is an important subject matter for you, animal biology, then you learn it for your career. That's your mindset. You learn it for your whole future, not for a specific test or exam that's coming up. Okay, so that's the kicker. I'm going to be like a global advisor, and I'm going to say for your whole career in an animal biology field, this is the way to learn. Not many people will tell you these this method. So you can teach yourself for overall learning not to do well on a specific test because the specific test might be garbage. You know, instructors can make tests that, okay, I'm going to make sure everybody gets A's or B's, but then it's not really related to what you might run into later. So I'm, I don't know the future. So I teach for overall learning not to do well on a specific test, but if you teach for overall learning, then no matter what test comes up, you'll do well. Okay, so in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to explain what I call the Ulrich Technique of Note Extension, uh, with the acronym ATONE. <laughs> I've played around with different names. One time I had note manipulation and somebody said, gee, that sounds kind of devious. You're manipulating something. Well, I don't know. You can manipulate things without being devious, but this is a technique that I've developed over the years. And later on at the end, I'll give you a website where I'm building something, but it's going to be very similar to what I'm telling you here. Okay. So now the other thing I want to say is this technique is built with animal biology focus. It's really for people that are going to be in some area of animal biology as their major, as a um, hobby, or, you know, career. So it's animal biology. You might say, will this work with physics? Well, I'd have to talk to a physics instructor and do you know some investigation i have a feeling it works pretty well in all the what i would call the hard sciences where there's you know not much leeway of interpretation like you know when we talk about the kidney we can't say oh i want i think it does this no it's known what it does and there's some unknowns about the kidney but we know a lot about the kidney and but poetry you know okay what makes a good poem okay there's a thousand different answers. So my focus is animal biology. And then I want to tell you that when you have exam or quiz questions, they really require that you have an integrated knowledge bank of a subject. And I'll, I'll use the kidney. Well, no, let me use blood because the first couple lessons are in blood, right? So blood, you get your information from a recorded video lesson. You do reading in something about blood. You might have an old biology book sitting next to your desk that you read a chapter or some paragraphs about blood. Then maybe you have some relative that works at a blood bank or is some health professional or whatever, and you learn something about blood from that person. Well, my technique uh, of note extension is really to put everything on the same page by subject or processes, okay? And so then, since this is on top of a series about animal biology, for example, 
if you've got a question, name the formed element of blood that has a nucleus. Well, you'd have to think about where you got this information. What is a nucleus? What is a formed element? And the thing is, you need to integrate it on pages and notes that are really made by subject or process rather than what I call linear notes. Like when you sit down a lecture, you start at time one and at the end of the lecture you've made notes and then the next day you come and you add notes. Those are linear notes but you might learn specific things about let's say blood on day one of the lecture, of day 15, and then of 18 and then here comes the test that wants you to talk about blood but the information is spread out through the text, web stuff, and you never put it on the same page, the integration. That's what I want to do, okay? Show you how to do this. So like I'm saying here on the far right, there's a lot of sources of information. Video lessons, for example, required reading. You might have textbooks on the material. You might just do a Google search and look at blood or formed elements. You might read something in newspapers. I know like the New York Times, I think it's on Tuesday, they have a science section. Again, I mentioned other people. So this is a technique where you can gather information and write things down yourself, because that's another thing I'm gonna promote. Like, you know, PowerPoint slides are almost useless because somebody else put them together. Uh, this is you. So as I stated, since this learning lesson is really kind of how to learn this biology of companion animal material, I watched the video, the lesson called Blood One, and I want to use it as an example of how I generated these, I'll call them pages. So now when I was watching what I called Blood One, I wasn't writing down notes linear on a page. I would listen for a topic or a process, then pause, and I'm big into pausing those lessons. That's the beauty of the lesson rather than being in a lecture hall. You can't pause the instructor. Well, in one sense you can. You can raise your hand and ask a question, and that's something I always promote. But here, you can pause and write something down. You can, you know, go back and see it again. So this is a few, these are a few examples, and I would suggest putting these topics or processes, subjects on the top of a page and then make bulleted propositions. Propositions are statements, and in this case, these are true statements, but they don't really oftentimes make a full sentence, okay? And then you make these pages, and then what you do is have a three ring binder, and so make sure these are pages that have the holes punched, and then you put them alphabetically in a notebook. Then when you have a question, let's say, oh, what did I learn about growth hormone? You can find that page immediately. So let's look at this. Here is something I generated, a page, and I actually promote doing this by hand because when you're writing something, it, you learn more than typing it out. So I watched blood one, and here's what I came up with on my sheet for blood. Now I came up with other sheets, like I came up with hemoglobin, and we'll see some other ones, but I'm gonna just show you. Now these are propositions. So the whole thing is blood. So I don't repeat in my notes the word blood. I just know, and I can say it though when I'm looking at this, studying for a test, blood carries oxygen to tissues. Okay, it's gonna come in the lungs, and it's gonna be carried to the tissues. Then blood also carries carbon dioxide to the lungs from all the tissue. I'm going to try to read this fast. It trans, you know, it's talked about transportation. Transports, hormones, heats, amino acids. If you know abbreviations, you can use them because these notes are for you, right? If the blood is bright red, that's an oxygenated state. That means hemoglobin. The pigment is bright red. That means, hey, I've got oxygen. Well, a little sidebar, blood that's contaminated with carbon monoxide, that poison is also a bright red. Uh, we won't go there, but anyway, dull red. That means the oxygen has been removed mostly. And then in the video lesson, it says, hey, arteries carry bright red blood. 
Veins carry dark red blood, okay? Hey, the pigment that makes that red blood cell bright red or even whatever color red is hemoglobin. So now I've left, you know, another bulleted point, and you, this could be a lot of bulleted points. They're not full paragraphs. You can see how fast you can read this. Now, the thing is, the best is if you generate these yourselves because you use a lot of cognitive processes. How do I write that down? You might revise. If you hand this to somebody, yes, it's great, but they're not going to learn as much because they didn't have any cognitive processing. You had to write it down. You had to remember how to spell hemoglobin. That's going to help you spell hemoglobin. If somebody just reads it, it's not going to help them spell hemoglobin, right? Okay, so I've got another page I made from the Blood One lesson. It talks about formed elements of blood. It talks about, hey, there's three members. There's three types of formed elements. The form means, hey, I can see it with a microscope. I wrote that down here. And the formed elements, if I was um, doing this by hand, it's hard to do this, but I would go like this, right? I would do something like that. Hey, for the three members, the three formed elements are urethrocytes, leukocytes, platelets. And then you know what? All those can be pages themselves. Okay, and if you don't know anything about microscopes, you could make a page on top that says microscopes. And I've got one more page I want to show you before I tell you a few more things. Every time you run into a prefix or suffix, you can write it down and do the definition. And you might want to do this by like alphabetical, so you might have a page that is like got the A's and B's prefixes and suffixes. And you know, you could spread out like that. I just showed you three, but here's the kicker. I could put a page, a white sheet of paper or index card over the left column and try to generate, for example, what prefix or suffix means cell or white. And you know what? There's more than one answer for white. Wow. And red. So anyway, in that blood one lesson, I talked about, hey, erythrocyte, and I think I said site means cell. Leukocytes, that's white. So when you see the word leukocyte, that means a white cell. And lo and behold, they are white. And then urethro means red. And so if you combine that erythrocyte, that means a red cell. There's a lot of prefixes and suffixes, but if you do it this way, you write them down, you're learning. I would suggest maybe making A's and B's on one page and C's and D's and so forth. That way it wouldn't get too crowded. You could cover over one column and test yourself about the other column. So one thing I should add here is, remember, this was from the Blood One video lesson. What if you're doing some required reading and there's other prefixes and suffixes? Then you'd write them all down, right? Because... The thing is, this whole atone process is about integrating material, integration of material from different sources onto the same page. Because when you go to a test or quiz, it doesn't say, hey, from the book reading, what's the answer to this question? Or from the video lesson, what's the answer to this question? No, the questions are on subjects, processes. So th this gets you a step closer to doing well on a test. You don't throw away those linear notes. You keep them, but you study from these notes that are made this way. Okay, so I always say you should do these by hand because then you could actually make drawings on your pages as well. And then let's say uh, you learn so much about blood, you go to a second page. There's nothing wrong with that. You would just label the first page one and page two, just to keep track of them. If you do it by hand, then you're learning how to spell, you draw something. Uh, so I highly recommend doing it by hand. Then I also recommend a three ring binder where you can put pages in alphabetically because you don't know what's going to be coming up. You, you know, and the other thing about having it in a binder if somebody says, hey, I'd like to learn how to do this, and you want to show them something, they can make copies of it or 
whatever. Okay, and here's one other thing, too, before I forget. They're in a three-ring binder. So then you take another class that talks about urethrocytes. You go back to the binder you made for this material. You take out the pages that apply to the next course. And then you write the material down from the next course on these pages. You're accumulating over courses. It's all about the same subject, but then your cognitive structure is going to be more complete if you carry these pages forward to other courses. Okay, so that's, I think, a big selling point there, although we're not selling anything, are we? Now, the other thing is, don't debate or question if you should make a new page on a topic. Let's say you run into osmosis. Well, you might say, gee, I wonder if we'll ever talk about it again. And in one video lesson, it might say, osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane. Well, should I write it down or not? Yes. Who knows if you ever will use it again? You might use it in another class. But osmosis, yes, it's a process. It's the diffusion of water. Keep it short. Keep them propositions. Don't write full sentences or paragraphs. And you can, like for osmosis, you can make beautiful drawings about osmosis, too. So, yeah, and you never question or debate, debate about, oh, I wonder if I have that prefix again. No, just do it. Let's see. I'm going to make sure all my suggestions stay there. Um, sometimes you'll run into stuff where you material, you might say, I wonder if that's worthy of writing down. Well, rather than question it, you might just make a page of pending material, maybe topics or processes that you don't know if it's really that important. Again, it's kind of like don't debate, make it. But if you feel like I'm not going to make a page yet, I'm going to put it on my pending. That way you won't forget it. It won't be um, covered over by other material. Now, here's a neat little Chinese proverb that I run into, and it's stated in different ways. But... This is the importance of doing this by hand, by you, you're doing it, you're questioning it. Hear and forget, see and remember, do and understand. It's called active learning, and you could, you know, Google active learning. But the more the learner does, the better learning for the long term. I mean, you can cram and maybe do well on a certain test, but that material evaporates if it's not really in what's called your knowledge domains. You can rotely remember something, do well on a test, and then two months later you can say, I remember that on the board, and that's here, but I, I can't tell you anything about it. Okay, wow. Is that going to help you in your career? Maybe it's a course that was fun and it wasn't anything about your career, then so be it. But if you are going to be an animal biology I know this can help you a lot. So I'm going to end this by saying, hey, I am going to be working on a few more explanations, maybe some more graphics. I've, in this lesson, I've told you the essence of it. You make pages by hand. They're alphabetical. You write down propositions. You put them in bulleted points. You study for the test that way or your career that way, and then it all works out pretty well. But I'm going to do, you know, try to give some more examples at that website there. It's under construction right now, but um, I'm a firm believer in this. And you carry these pages to other classes, and that's the thing. Like, let's say you study endocrinology and you study the thyroid gland. You make these pages, which... There's some lessons on thyroid glands and thyroid hormones. And the next time you run into that in a subject, you go back to the notebook and pull them out and put them in your current course notebook. See you later. It's been fun.